I just think that there, like, there have to be reasons that you get up in the morning and you want to live. Like, why do you want to live? What, what's the point? What, what inspires you? What, what do you love about the future? no money so a fourth failure a fourth failure would have been absolutely game over done done spacex bankrupt yes yeah, it's bad enough to have three strikes having four strikes it's really it's kaput <laughs> that we'd won a one and a half billion dollar contract. And I couldn't even hold the phone. It's like, I just, I just blurted out, I love you guys. <laughs> they saved you. Yeah, they did. How is it going in terms of uh, creating the systems that will engage us in space exploration, not just for governments and not just for NASA, but for private citizens as well? Well, y you have to divide the efforts that are going on into what, what is an, an orbit class effort versus a suborbital right. class effort. And there's really a very big difference. But the general public doesn't understand the difference between getting to space and getting to, getting to orbit. And so it's, it's important to make that distinction. Um, to, to do a suborbital flight, you need a terminal velocity of around Mach 3. Right. Uh, to, do, to get to orbit, you need a terminal velocity of, of Mach 25. It's, it's a huge, huge difference. Um, and because the energy required to do that scales with the square of the velocity. So um, suborbital might be nine units of energy. Uh, orbit is 625 units of energy. So uh, it's only about one and a half percent of the energy of orbit is required to get to suborbit. So, so we're in the we're in the in the, in the orbit class, um, and, and that's it's, it's a lot more capital, and and, uh, and 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 that's really where you're sort of pushing the the, the ragged edge of, of what's what's physically possible. And your understanding came from sort of uh, from this was not what you studied in college. Well, I studied physics, um, but well, studying physics and studying rocket science, right? Is a very different <laughs> thing. Um, so, uh, but no, I picked it up along the way. Uh, yeah. Last time you were here, you, you spoke about this, um, what seemed like a kind of incredibly ambitious dream to uh, develop rockets that are actually reusable. Uh, and you've only gone and done it. Help us understand the scale of this thing. Well, I think visually, you can see that um, person. Yeah, and that's the vehicle. <laughs> so if that, if that was a skyscraper, that's like a... 40, did I read that? 40 stories? Yeah, a little, maybe a little more, yeah. Well, like, why do we need to build a city on Mars with a million people on it in your lifetime? Which I, I think is kind of what you said you'd love to do. Yeah, I think it's important to have um, a future that is inspiring and appealing. I mean, I just think that there, like, there have to be reasons that you get up in the morning and you want to live. Like, why do you want to live? What, what's the point? What, what inspires you? What, what do you love about the future? And if, if we're not out there, if the future does not include being out there among the stars, 
Uh, and being a multi-planet species, I find that, in that it's incredibly depressing if that's not the future that we're going to have. Um, People, people want to position this as an either-or, that, that um, there, are so, there are so many desperate things happening on the planet now, from climate to poverty to, you know, you pick, you pick your issue. Um, and and, and this, this, this feels like a distraction. You're, you're, you shouldn't be thinking about this, you should be solving what's, what's here and now. And to be fair, you've, you've done a fair old bit to actually do that with, with your you know, work, work on sustainable energy, but wh why not just do that? Well, I, I think there's... I look at the future from a standpoint of, of the probabilities. It's like it's like a sustainable energy will happen no matter what. If there was no Tesla, Tesla never never existed. It it would have to happen out of necessity. It's tautological. Um, if, if you until you if you don't have sustainable energy, it means you have unsustainable energy. Eventually, you'll run out, um, and the the, the uh, laws of economics will drive uh, will drive civilization towards sustainable energy inevitably. The sustainable energy future, I think, is largely inevitable, uh, but being space for civilization is definitely not inevitable. If you look at the, uh, at the, the progress in space, in 1969, we were able to send somebody to the moon. 1969. Mm. Um, then we had the, the space shuttle. The, the space shuttle could only take people to low Earth orbit. Mm. Then the space shuttle retired, and the United States could take no one to orbit. So that's the trend. The trend is like down to nothing. This is not. People are mistaken when they think that technology just automatically improves. It does not automatically improve. It, it only improves if a lot of people work very hard to make it better. And actually, it, it will, I think, it by itself degrade, actually. You look at great civilizations like ancient Egypt, and they're able to make the pyramids, and they forgot how to do that. And, and the Romans, they built these incredible aqueducts. They forgot how to do it. I think, I think the, the, the value of beauty and inspiration is... I think the value of beauty and inspiration is... 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 매일 비슷한 일상이 반복되고 아무 기대도 되지 않는 하루가 시작될 때 우린 생각해 일어나기 싫다 어쩌면 우리도 아침에 일어나야 할 이유가 필요한 게 아닐까? 궁금한 미래가 영감을 주는 무언가가 필요한 게 아닐까? 그런 생각이 든다면 오늘 일론 머스크처럼 밤하늘을 바라보자 밤하늘에 떠 있는 달이 내가 서 있는 곳처럼 흙과 바위로 덮여 있고 그 위에 니람스트롱이 발자국을 남겼다는 사실을 생각해보자 끝을 알수 없이 거대한 우주가 원자보다 작은 점에서 시작됐고 지금 이 순간도 팽창하고 있다는 걸 상상해보자 그 사실이 신기하고 놀랍다면 지금 구독을 누르고 좋아요를 눌러보자 이제부터 진짜 우주 이야기가 시작될 거니까